just gotta begin to chase a dream that is bigger than you. I'm Stacey Kennedy here with you as part of the Be Well platform. I am a registered dietitian and licensed nutritionist, and today we're going to be focusing on our topic of renewal. So I'm going to pull up our content right now, and we are going to get to it. We're going to talk about how pre- and probiotic foods and how they can help your gut health and rejuvenate both your body and your mind. This is a hot new area of research, something that I know we've addressed a little bit in the past, um, but you probably have heard more about and have questions about. So this is going to be our uh, focus for today, and I look forward to kind of diving into it. So here are some facts that you may or may not be aware of. Did you know that about 70% of your immune system is found in your gut? And this time of year, it's not all about resolutions. It's also about really staying healthy and well and supporting our immune system. So, so much of your immune function is regulated by your gut health. And so an unhealthy microbiome, which we're going to explain in just a moment, is linked with many different kinds of chronic illnesses, everything from um, obesity to obviously digestive issues like IBS, um, as well as autoimmune concerns, um, diabetes, heart disease, many other chronic illnesses. And our gut health can actually support our brain health. So cognitive function, mental clarity, as well as protecting us from many um, illnesses related to aging and brain health, uh, such as cognitive decline, Alzheimer's, um, other things like that. So, and, and even uh, brain injury. So if you've ever suffered um, from a concussion or any other kind of traumatic brain injury, there is a significant component that ties directly into your gut health. Okay, so pre and probiotic foods. This is gonna be the real focus of our conversation. You can eat for both better digestion and better metabolism. So this idea of renewal and resolutions really does connect into these kinds of foods that we want to have in a lot more abundance on an everyday basis. So as I mentioned, our gut does a lot, and I already told you a few things, but here are a few more. So in addition to immunity, your gut really regulates the inflammatory response. So inflammation in your body can impact blood vessels and heart disease or diabetes, but that inflammation can also impact how you feel. So back pain and joint pain and other kinds of um, immune-related um, issues. So like MS and Lyme disease, uh, lupus, that kind of stuff. But just inflammation in general um, is something that is regulated through, through your gut that we're looking to reduce. Your gut can regulate hormone balance. Obviously, it is involved in nutrient absorption and digestion, um, but neurotransmitters, so that communication between your brain, your muscles, and your digestive, digestive system is very strong, as well as metabolism and energy. So there's a lot of research showing that having pre and probiotic foods, sometimes supplements, can really support a healthy metabolism as well and healthy weight management, particularly with age. So I've thrown around a lot of terms, let's break them down. So your gut microbiome, these are the bacteria and other microorganisms that live in your intestines. And we have an awful lot of them. Think of it as your own personal city and different neighborhoods, different populations. How do they get along with each other? Are they balanced? Do you have overgrowth or underrepresentation? Um, but your gut microbiome is this very unique, very personal, very vast, um, uh, area in your in your digestive tract where these bacteria live. Um, and so it's really important to understand um, their significance within our overall body and regulation. So fiber, we all know fiber is good to eat. Most Americans don't get enough fiber. On average, most Americans maybe get like 15 grams of fiber and the daily recommendation is 25 to 35. For weight management, optimal health is really more like 40 to 50 grams of fiber per day. 
So these are the non-digestible carbohydrates predominantly found in plant foods. So whole grains, nuts and seeds, fruits, vegetables. These are some examples of fiber rich foods that are important to have for hunger regulation, uh, weight management, but really to keep this microbiome or this city that is regulating almost all of your body systems kind of happy and healthy and well balanced. Then the focus of today is on probiotic foods and prebiotic foods. So probiotics or bacteria or um, that help to maintain the balance of these organisms in your intestines. So probiotics are new bacteria that you are introducing into your city, right? So pro, it's like outside the body coming in. Prebiotics are foods you eat that help to fuel the healthy bacteria you already have. So prebiotics are kind of like fertilizer on the soil, right? To help your microbiome to grow, to flourish and to be well balanced. So these are gonna promote the growth of the microorganisms that already live in your intestines. Probiotics, new prebiotics, feeding what you have, right? So they, they kind of work uh, together in that way, but they are different. So gut dysbiosis is when your gut health is dysregulated, right? And like we already saw all the issues that can cause. So how do you resolve this? You eat more plant foods, you exercise because movement is something that also assists your microbiome, right? So constipation and being backed up really uh, can overfeed some of those microorganisms. And so that's just one of the many mechanisms by which moving your body supports your gut health. It really helps kind of the muscles of your digestive tract move at the proper pace um, to not just help you to be regular, but also help to regulate those healthy bacteria living in your microbiome. We know that meditation and other forms of relaxation and stress management benefit your gut health. Prebiotic fibers and supplements or foods and probiotics, again, either in foods or as a supplement. Now, they're not all the same. I'm going to go over some brands and some guidelines, okay? But first, we're going to talk about food. So what do you want to eat more of to have a better gut? So no surprises here, we've got non-starchy veggies like broccoli, we've got nuts and seeds, we've got those high fiber fruits like uh, citrus, like oranges or pineapple, we have legumes, so like lentils or black beans or peanuts, and then we have prebiotic foods, which we're going to talk about now. So prebiotic rich foods, remember, this is fertilizer for your soil. These are foods that give you all kinds of nutrients but some of those nutrients directly help support the healthy bacteria in your microbiome, which is gonna rejuvenate and renew your entire body. Your skin, I didn't even mention that yet, your microbiome is very connected to your skin. So dandelion greens, some of these might feel obscure. <laughs> All green vegetables are obviously healthy. Uh, dandelion greens in particular have a lot of prebiotic fiber, so those fuel sources that your microbiome is looking for. Apples are a great source, so are pears. Uh, grains, I'm gonna get into more in a minute, but whole grains are an important source of fiber. Whole grains actually give us more fiber than a lot of vegetables do. And they specifically, some of them have prebiotic fiber, like oats as an example. Leeks, onions, and garlic are fantastic sources for prebiotic fiber, as well as leeks are very high in iron. Bananas, bananas get a bad reputation. So anytime you see somebody on social media telling you bananas have too much sugar, you can just unfollow that account right away. Uh, bananas are a fantastic source of prebiotic fiber that is very beneficial. So again, bananas causing constipation is like really not accurate either. Um, they can be a very beneficial source of potassium, which as you know, if you're into working out is also important for your muscles. Flax seed, so ground flax seed is the best way. Whole flax seeds are healthy too, but the ground flax seed or the flax seed meal is really helpful for balancing estrogen in your body and is an omega-3 fat, so it's an anti-inflammatory fat. But the fiber that is in the flax seeds is wonderful for feeding your gut microbiome. So you might add ground flax seed to your oatmeal. You might put some apples in there too. You might use it as like a coating on chicken instead of like a breading. Um, you can put it on your salad. There's a lot of ways that you can incorporate ground flaxseed into your diet. Cocoa. Um, so 
that's where chocolate comes from. Um, but cocoa is also an excellent prebiotic food, also rich in magnesium, and asparagus. Asparagus is an excellent source of prebiotic fiber to regulate your gut health. Here are some more foods that are spotlighted in research and maybe some that you don't eat on a routine basis that you could start to explore. So inulin and chicory root, these are types of fibers found in plants that have potent prebiotic activity. Now, some people with IBS will get a little gassy if they have too much inulin or chicory root, but most people tolerate it well. But you know, nutrition's like a personalized science now. So some of the things I say on here might be great for you. Some of the things on here may not, you know, be well tolerated by your personal body, and that's okay. So there are some coffee alternatives. Nothing wrong with drinking a cup of coffee in the morning. But there are some alternatives. There's a brand like Ticino, and those are made from chicory root, and there are other brands too. So if you're looking for additional coffee in the afternoon or looking to cut down on caffeine or just want to explore getting more prebiotic food into your diet, you could check some of those out. They're delicious. They smell great. We mentioned leeks and onions. Those are naturally high in inulin. Uh, Jerusalem artichokes are another vegetable. Um, and we mentioned garlic and asparagus. So they're like superstars when it comes to these prebiotic uh, foods that will help to fuel your gut health. So they help to promote gut-friendly bacteria. They help reduce constipation. And they also help control your blood sugar levels. This is all in research demonstrating this. Barley is not gluten-free, but not everybody is gluten-free or should be. Um, some people should, some people don't need to be. But anyway, barley is a prebiotic-rich food that is also an excellent source of something called beta-glucan. So beta-glucan is a natural component of barley and some other whole grains that really benefits your immunity. Beta-glucan is shown to be an immune uh, supporter and that all happens when you eat these foods and it happens in your gut. It helps to maintain the barrier of your gut lining and help prevent leaky gut and really help to keep that strong and support your immune system. It can also lower cholesterol and lower your blood sugar. Um, jicama is a great vegetable. You can even buy at Trader Joe's like jicama wraps. It's just peeled and like thin circles of jicama, which is a vegetable. It's almost like it's like a big water chestnut. It's delicious and refreshing. You'll see it sometimes in like Mexican food. Um, you can make fries out of it in your air fryer. You can just chop it up and put it in your salad on a wrap, in a sandwich, in a bowl. It's very crunchy and refreshing. It's super low in calories and high in water, but the hero part of it is that it's rich in inulin. So it can help to boost your immunity, control your blood sugar, and improve your digestion. They sell it at the grocery store. You just, it's like, it looks like this, and it, you just peel it, and then you can slice it, dice it, make it into matchsticks. Seaweed, you can eat in a variety of ways in soup. You can buy those little seaweed snacks. Um, but seaweed is an excellent source of many important antioxidants and minerals. But in terms of our conversation today, it is rich in the prebiotic fiber. So seaweed is shown to boost friendly gut bacteria and block the growth of harmful gut bacteria. So we talk about gut and microbiome balance. It's not all about boosting. If you have an overpopulation, that's gonna negatively affect your gut health and kind of your overall body. So you wanna have more of some bacteria and less of others so they exist and coexist in a balance. So seaweed as an example has fibers that boost the good bacteria and help limit the bacteria that you don't want in high levels and also supports immunity. So you can enjoy seaweed. You can just wrap up some you know, salmon or chicken or rice or without the rice. You can put avocado in there, make a little wrap, just eat the little snacks. Uh, it actually can be very versatile and very tasty. Okay, I mentioned supplements and there are lots of brands. So, you know, you can certainly find other wonderful ones, but this talk will go on forever. So I just picked a few that I like to suggest, excuse me, on a regular basis that have some um, research uh, behind them and are known to be quality brands. Again, there are definitely other good ones. But I will say, if you're looking for prebiotic fiber, whether it's to add fiber to your diet, for hunger regulation or for promoting gut health, you 
definitely want to choose a powder. The powders are far more effective than the capsules um, in, in the many years that I've been practicing. So I, I would encourage you to use a fiber a powder. And uh, these brands here, um, all particularly the Sun Fiber um, and the Regular Girl, which uses Sun Fiber, um, they dissolve very well. So you can put it in tea, you can put it in water, you can put it in coffee. Uh, this psyllium husk powder, this brand here, is also gluten-free, and it does dissolve well. So these are all very different. If you've ever tried something like Metamucil, you know, these don't have artificial sweeteners added to them. They're not gritty. Um, so I, I would encourage you to kind of check these out if anything I'm talking about is resonating. Um, obviously, you want to go for those foods as your primary source, but be aware that there are some supplements out there. And you should talk with your doctor, talk with your dietitian before just starting a supplement. So one thing to bear in mind with any fiber supplement, whatever the brand is, fiber will bind to things. So if you take medications or you take other supplements, ideally you separate the fiber by an hour for sure from your meds maybe from your other vitamins, right? So if you take a medication, let's say for your thyroid in the morning, you know, you would still need to wait an hour or so before you put the fiber into your tea, as an example. Okay, so prebiotics feed the healthy bacteria you already have. Probiotics are adding new healthy bacteria into your body. So it's kind of building your population. So probiotic rich foods are also very healthy. And again, on an individual basis, some of these foods, you might feel great when you eat them. Some of them, some of them might like give you gas and they may not be the best for you, right? Especially if you have IBS, it just depends. But these are all very healthy foods to explore and try. And some of them might be, you know about them. Some might be new information. So tempeh, which is a, a natural type of soy food or miso, which it comes as a paste. So you can use it in soup or in other um, applications. That's a great source of probiotics. They're fermented. So all these foods share in common that they're either aged, um, like the cheeses you see here. So cheese can be healthy. Um, or they are fermented, right? And so that it process is what is giving these foods those healthy bacteria. So kefir is like a drinkable yogurt. You can get it without added sugar. You can use it in a smoothie. You can drink it on its own. You can use it um, like into oatmeal, not necessarily heated, um, but like to cool it off. Obviously yogurt, everyone probably already knew that. Um, and look for yogurt that's plain without added sugar, ideally like a Greek yogurt because it has more protein. Um, and then add in, you know, your own cinnamon, your own vanilla, your own berries or pomegranate seeds or walnuts or whatever else you want to add in. Sauerkraut is like classic probiotic. Um, that's why it's popular in many cultures. Kimchi, pickles, kombucha. These are all foods that will help to boost your probiotic intake that are foods and not supplements. So, and I can't even begin to go over probiotic supplements. I mean, I can, but I feel like that's like a whole hour minimum. There are so many kinds, I'm just gonna go back one. There's so many kinds of probiotic supplements and the right probiotic for you, because now you're introducing new bacteria to your system. So if you have an overgrowth of something, you don't want more of that kind of bacteria. If you have an undergrowth, you do. So how do you know there are tests available that a dietitian or nutritionist can, or your doctor can uh, recommend for you? Um, you know, you kind of want to be careful, I guess, um, and different strains. So there are different strains in each kind of probiotic supplement, and they all have sort of different key functions. So like, meaning like depending on what your issues are, right? So if your health, whatever your health goal is, there are specific strains of probiotics that might be helpful to take in certain doses. Ideally, nowadays, like in the beginning of probiotics, it was like more is better. So you see products like 50 billion, you know, 30 billion. Now it's really more recommended to stay lower, you know, 5, 10, maybe 20 at the most, um, and try to rely on some of the foods and the prebiotics. So you're not, you know, um, overpopulating your microbiome, which, you know, is also um, part of the imbalance. So I think as far as what strain, like if you're having diarrhea, if you're trying to manage your weight, if you're having skin issues, um, if you have different kinds of digestive disorders, it's a fascinating science and um, certainly something 
for us to consider. So if you have questions on that, like which probiotics might be right for me, um, you know, see if you can leave comments or maybe we'll set that up as like a whole separate uh, conversation. Okay, I wanna continue on because there's a few other important topics when we think about renewal and gut health. So we talked about all these great things to eat more of, you're gonna have so much fun exploring some new flavors, some new foods, um, but now let's look at the things that are actually kind of sabotaging your gut health and your overall systems um, when we eat too many of them. Obviously everything in moderation, not a problem at all. Um, but you want to, in general, reduce, obviously, ultra-processed foods um, because they don't have a lot of nutritional value and they tend to have inflammatory-based oils or tons of added sugars. So refined grains, refined oils, meaning like instant oatmeal on its own does not have as much fiber as steel cut, but rolled oats are actually pretty high in fiber too, right? Or like bread, you know, white bread is going to have a lot less of the whole grain than a whole grain bread. So it's more about, same thing with pastas, et cetera. Um, and oils, you know, you kind of want to look for like olive oil, extra virgin olive oil, avocado oil, uh, maybe some canola oil, things like that. Added sugars are a real issue for gut health. It is not about the calories. They can drastically contribute to this overgrowth and gas and bloating. And we're going to cover that more in just a minute. Alcohol as well. Alcohol is a real culprit when it comes to an imbalance in your gut and many of the issues we were just talking about. So having a lot less of these foods is going to be helpful. Doesn't mean you can never have them. Same thing with red meat. You want to look for more plant-based proteins or fish or like lean chicken to have on a more frequent basis, right? So this is one you already knew. But why? I want to tell you why because it makes it a lot easier to start to shift your behavior if you really understand the reason. So sugar disrupts your gut microbiome. It reduces the diversity of gut bacteria. You want diversity because all the different kinds of bacteria have different jobs that are all important. It will increase the growth of proteobacteria. So these are some of the ones you don't want in an overgrowth because when you have too many of them, it contributes to the damage of your gut lining. So what that means is that it increases the permeability or it means that like your gut cells are kind of up against each other. They're not like intertwined like this. They're like knuckles up against each other, right? So they can kind of slip apart a little bit and get more permeable and more leaky, which means good stuff in your gut is leaking out and causing inflammation because it's in the wrong place in your body or things in other parts of your body or that are like in the tube of your gut are kind of leaking in um, into you. And so leaky gut is associated with a lot of issues, but inflammation is a big one, aches and pains, migraines, um, other kinds of issues. So we want to keep that barrier of our gut because, you know, when you're eating something, you're, it's like you're bringing stuff from the outside world into your body and you need that protection of your gut barrier to help reduce infection and to really keep your nutrients inside. So the other thing sugar does is it uh, blocks the growth of protective bacteria. So the ones you want more of, you want more like bacteriodes. Some of these words are hard to pronounce, um, but you want more of those. Those are protective for your gut and your gut lining. So sugar isn't, it's not like, oh, it's too many calories. It really is going to impact your gut. And when your gut microbiome is off, it is connected with difficulty with weight management. It is connected with weight gain and connected with resistance to weight loss and just obesity in general. So let's look deeper than calories when we're thinking about renewing ourselves this year and really kind of get to the, the why, okay? So less sugar. What about alcohol? Same story here. Alcohol can damage your gut. Like, like it will physically damage the cells of your gut lining. This doesn't mean you can never drink, but the more you have, the more damage that you can incur. So we know it can cause acid reflux. That's going to damage more cells. It can lead to diarrhea, which can cause like an imbalance in your gut microbiome, which can then cause inflammation. Obviously not a fun side effect anyway for your busy life. Um, alcohol, because of its kind of 
like damaging properties, right? You know, like, I mean, if you drink a strong alcohol, you feel it burn your throat. Like it is still burning kind of the whole way down. Um, and any alcohol can do that. Beer, wine, spirits. Um, when it comes to alcohol and gut health, it's, you know, avoiding a lot of added sugars, but it's also just limiting uh, the quantity altogether. So because the alcohol can kind of kill off some cells, it's actually reducing some of those helpful bacteria that we need for digesting our food in a positive way. It can promote leaky gut. Again, we talked about leaky gut. It can promote gastritis, which is stomach inflammation, bloating, and then, you know, over time, um, or for people with certain genetic risk factors can also cause some damage to your liver or to your pancreas. So if you're looking to reduce your alcohol intake, there's some really awesome recipes. So these are from town and country. They're hyperlinked in the title here. Um, and these are just some fun ones. So here's like a spicy watermelon um, mint agua fresca. So it has a lot of nutrients um, and it's really fun. It's really vibrant. Um, so these are some cool things that you can kind of check out. And if you're drinking alcohol, like every evening when you're cooking or something, sub some of this in if you're having a party have something else to offer um it's kind of fun to get into the mocktails here's a mule a mango based mule um and so again these ingredients are super healthy there's cucumber um and it's just a lot of fun and delicious one more that i'll share with you is a gimlet so this is a cucumber gimlet that doesn't have any alcohol um very simple to make just a few ingredients uh, can be very very refreshing Okay, so to recap, to support healthy digestion, we want prebiotic fiber in food. Um, here are some supplements I, rec I mentioned before. We also want hydration. We didn't really talk about that. We need a lot of fluid intake. And as I mentioned, we want movement. Make it fun. Exercise is another way that you can support your gut health, which will then help rejuvenate your entire body. So I want to thank you so much. You've all learned a lot about gut health and your microbiome. Hopefully you have some new ideas for some foods to try and a little bit more understanding as to why your microbiome is so important and how different things can impact it in a sort of positive or negative way. So thank you so much for your attention today and for being here. And I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day.